Hey folks, our notes for section nine are starting to shape up like this. Uh, yesterday we talked about disks. Today we're gonna talk about washers and I'm gonna go over page 244, example three with you. There are two functions, y sub one and y sub two, you can see them right here. <clears throat> and they're saying the region that we care about is gonna be rotated around the X axis. So I'm gonna make a little arrow about my X axis like this to say, hey, I'm gonna remind myself I'm rotating about that axis. And the region's bounded by this function on the top, this function is lower than it. And we're between X equals one and X equals four. They also say that between X equals one and X equals four, okay? So first thing would be to get a picture of what these graphs look like. So I've already set this up to save a little time. I'm over here on Desmos. I put my two functions in, but this might be a little misleading because you know the functions, well, this one has a domain that starts at zero and goes out to infinity. This one has all real numbers for its domain. <clears throat> so we don't want that. We wanna restrict them between one and four, right? So we could put a little curly bracket over here and we could say, let's go between one and four, right? So let's see if it's gonna do it for me. Yes. Now I'd like that to happen on the other function too. So why don't we just copy and paste that right down here in the other function. So now we've got our function restricted between X equals one and X equals four. Now Desmos isn't gonna rotate it around the X axis. So I also put that into Rhino and I connected the endpoints together. So I've, I've got this little region right here and I'm gonna rotate it about the X axis, right? So um, I've kind of done a bunch of steps here. Let's see if I can just make it redo those steps. So I, I've done the revolve in Rhino, it's called revolve. And um, I changed the color and I changed it to be a little bit more transparent. Uh, so when we look over at our perspective view, we can see here's our cross-sectional shape right there. And it's going over the x-axis. And I'm going to rotate it around and, and let's just kind of look at a couple things on here. It has a, you know, hole in the middle, right? So there we go. There we go. So there's the hole in the middle. You can still see the, the region that we're rotating around, around the x-axis, right? And if I can get it right here, the, the x-axis should look like it's going right through the middle. I'm having a hard time getting the, the angle right. It doesn't look like it's going through the the x-axis there, but you got to use your imagination. The x-axis should be going right through the middle. Let's see if I can get that to happen. Um, well, there we go. There we go. There we can see right down the x-axis, right? Okay. So, um, how, how do we find the volume of this thing, right? That's, that's the task that we have in front of us right now. So let me kind of sit, situate it back to where we are roughly at on our paper. And, you know, really what it comes down to is like, how do we do this on paper? So uh, you've got your axes written down, you know, your Y axis, maybe, I don't know, you label this and this is your X axis over here. And then you just put a rough sketch of those two functions. So there was one function kind of coming down like this, right? And then the other function was doing this little number. Uh, let's hide the, let's hide the, the three dimensional shape. And so we've got this function coming down and this function coming up like that, right? So the square root function is, is down below and it's doing something like, like this right here, right? Now, maybe I made it a little too narrow. I'm not, I'm not too worried about, you know, how accurate this thing is. I just, I want a visual picture of this. My first step is to flip it over, to reflect it over this line. So I would try to copy what is in the first quadrant right down here. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, we're just trying to get a picture that we can kind of put on our paper, right? Okay, so now I've reflected it over the axis. My next step would be to draw a little segment. You know, I don't know if you want to make it actually like a little rectangle in here and then do the same down here, all right? After I've done that, then what I try to do is I try to connect it with, you know, a circle to try to give it some perspective, right? So that would be like this, the, the inner inner part. And then the outer part is going to be all the way out to here, right? So dash, 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 all the way up to the top. And, you know, it depends on 
what your art skills are like. You can see mine are not that great, but we've got a thickness and that thickness is DX. So as I zoom out here, let's, let's go back up and look at our little outline. How do we do this? We, we uh, look at the cut solid, you know, we, we look at the cut solid into a flat slice, right? So um, how do we imagine this, this thing getting sliced? And maybe it would be a good time for me to go back over here and, and contour the thing, right? So if we go over here and we do a little contour, so contour, contour, and it says, okay, select the object you want to slice. And it says, select the plane base point. So that's going to be along the X axis and every point one. Sure. Okay. So I hit enter. It sliced my object and let's see, let's just grab those slices and see if we can drag them out of there. All right. So we've, we've got a million, uh, not maybe a million, but we got a lot of slices here, right? And uh, let's see if I could grab just one of those slices and let's pull that out the other way. So it's like over here, but I, I didn't get that center, the center ring right there, right? So I gotta, I gotta drag that over and boy, I don't know if that's gonna end up in the same place as the other one, but I think you can see that we, we've got a, a washer here, right? Let me see for just a moment if I could hide all this stuff, okay? Ooh, that might be a challenge for me and my, my rhino skills, but I'm going to change the object layer and then I'll hide it all. Okay. So, so you can see that we, we've got this little washer and, and what we really need is we need the area of that washer and then we're going to give it a little thickness. Now we've already done the thickness part. The thickness part is our, is our DX, right? So let's put this down kind of over here to the side. Let's put an integral sign. We know we're going to have an infinitely many of those little slices added up. And let's put a DX way the heck over here. Okay. Now, I, I know this might be a little challenging to visualize in here, but maybe you just take that washer out. And, and I don't know if you draw it right here or you can draw it. It doesn't matter really where you draw it. But you could see on Rhino that we have, we have a washer. Like, uh, you know, if you had a bolt and you're going to stick the bolt through and then this washer provides more of a bearing surface when you, you know, tighten everything up. So anyways, that's why I call this a washer. Uh, uh, so the distance from the X axis up to the top of the hole would be this distance from here up to there. That's like our inner radius right there. Right. So I'll call that radius. Uh, I don't know. I for radius inner. Right. And isn't that the distance from the X axis up to our function, the square root function? So that's just the square root function, right? Oh, geez. I don't know why I'm putting a six under there. Let me undo that. That's the square root function. And the outer radius, if I change to blue, let's say I go like, like this, there's my outer radius, right? That's going to be the distance all the way up to here, which is our let's call this our outer, it's going to be my 6e, it's my exponential function. Let me just put down exponential function, okay? So let's see, how do I get this little piece right there, right? So that that's really the, the trick. And, and we don't really, we don't want really just that distance right there. I, I, maybe, I, maybe I misled you there for a second. We really want this area minus this area right in here. So in blue, let me do pi r squared. That would be the, you know, the outer circles area. And then the inner circle right in here, r sub i. Let me, let me put a zero or an o. I should say an o right there on, the, on this r. And then we've got minus pi inner radius squared. Okay. So... You take this, this is our integrand, and we're going to put it right up in here. So let's see if I can select all this stuff right here. And let me try again. Select all of this stuff right here, and I'm going to just move it right up here. Okay. So the area of my cross section times 
times the thickness is going to give me the volume of one of these little slices right here, right? And the other thing we got to decide is we're going to go from what number to what number? Like, where's the where's the, the biggest one on the left? Well, that started at one. And where's the smallest one on the right? That stops at four. So I'm going to go from one to four. This is going to be the volume of my solid over here. So let, let's try to get everything in terms of one variable. Well, R sub zero, we said, is the exponential function. It's right there. So I get, and I could factor the pi's out. I'm going to do that just to make my life a little bit easier. So I'm going to put the pi out front of my integral sign. And then for my R sub zero, I'm going to get 6e to the point 2x. Okay. And for my, uh, for my R sub i, I'm going to have the square root of x. Ooh, I forgot something very important here. These are both squared, right? So squared and squared. Now, why are they squared? Because we're doing pi r squared minus pi r squared. So the outer circle minus the inner circle. All right. And then we're going to have dx on the end. Now, let me show you what would be completely wrong for a second. All right. So like I was saying earlier, if, if we just go for this length right here, that would be the exponential function minus the square root function. So the exponential function 6e to the 0.2x, and there's a negative on it now that I see that. Let me, let me put the little negative in there. That's super important. We don't drop that. So if I did this, though, if I did minus the square root of x, and I said that's my radius, that would not be the right volume because that length right there, then what we would be doing is we'd be taking that length and we'd just be putting it right down here and rotating that length around the x-axis. That wouldn't, this wouldn't create a hole in the middle. It would be more of a disc and it would be way less volume than what we're doing right here because we're taking that, that length and we're rotating it around the axis. And if we set up our integrand correctly, this is going to do that for us. It's really going to cut that hole out from the middle and create a much larger volume, volume than this would right up here, right? So we could do this, you know, by hand. It, it's not really that difficult, right? So we'd have something like pi from one to four. We'd square this stuff. We'd get 36, right? We'd get 36 e to the uh, negative 0.4x. And then over here, we square this. We get minus x dx. I, I think you definitely want to do that before you start taking the antiderivative. Because you'd have, you know, you have this inner function in here. Let me let me move this up a little bit. You have this inner function in here, and it's derivative. You're, there's no way we're going to get that right next to the dx function without, you know, including another function out front, which is not legal to do. You can insert a constant, but you can't insert a whole new function in front of the dx and out in front of the integral sign. So that's why I'm saying we got to square this first. OK, and then we're going to take the antiderivative. So here here we go on the antiderivative. Uh, so let's see, I get pi times. I'm going to leave a parenthesis there and then I would raise. Now, wait, this is an exponential function. I can't just raise the power by one and divide by the new power. I got to be very careful. I got an exponential function here. So I'm going to look at the inner function. And this time I am going to try to insert a constant in front of the dx and maybe it's best to, to kind of take it a little bit slower here so if i go from one to four and i move the 36 out front okay and then if i took the derivative of the inside function i'd have to have a negative 0.4 in front of my dx that would mean that i'd have to insert a negative 0.4 underneath the 36. let's zoom in on this guy for just a second okay so what i'm saying is I'm taking the derivative of this inner function and I'm putting that right next to my dx. And so I need to have a negative 0.4 out front. Now I would have a e to the negative 0.4x and the inner function's derivative is sitting right next to the dx. Now this guy over here, I don't need to spend any time figuring that out. So maybe I go ahead and do x squared divided by two and I just put that over here. I go maybe and I take my pi probably all the way over there. So I'm going to get pi x squared divided by two, and I'm going to evaluate that one. Okay, so let's close the parentheses down here. And I'm going to go from one to four. So I took the antiderivative of this one because I could. This one was a little bit more complex, so I'm showing a couple extra steps. And so what do we have? Well, we got 36 over point uh, negative four uh, 
times pi. So I'm going to put 36 pi divided by negative 0.4. And then we would have e to the 0.4x with a negative. And then we're going to put our evaluation bar down, 1 to 4. And then this guy right over here, I guess we could do that. That would be 16, would be 4 squared, right? So I'm plugging the 4 and I get 16 divided by 2 is 8. So I'd have minus 8 pi. And then we would have minus, let's put this in parentheses, minus, and then you stick a one in there, you get pi halves, right? So we'd have, I think, pi halves. Boy, I hope I did that arithmetic correctly. So that's that part of our antiderivative. We'd have to keep going, right? Now, we could do something like this. We could go over to Desmos, and we could type in integrate. We're going to go from one to four, and then we're going to take pi, and then we're going to do... Uh, it was this function right here squared, right? So we could rename this f of x. And we could rename this g of x. And then we could come, I think, down in here and go f of x and put a squared on the outside. And then we would need uh, minus, and we're going to go g of x. And I'm going to put another parenthesis here so that I get the pi distributed all the way through. I'm going to do g of x squared. So we're going to have g of x, and we want to square that. All right. And so now we've got our f of x function squared minus our g of x function squared. We close the parenthesis down. Ooh, not there. We close the parenthesis down. That will make sure the pi is going to get distributed all the way through. And then we could do dx. And I'm getting a volume of 108.882. So I should be able to get 108 point whatever it was uh, from this information right here. And I'd challenge you to continue to try to do that. You know, plug the four in, plug the one in, see what you get. And see if you can get this number right here, 1088.2. Now, I'm, I'm really putting myself on the spot here because what I want to do is I'm going to turn my, my volume back on. And I'm going to select volume and see if it will measure the volume of this solid. I didn't I didn't prepare to do this before starting this. If, rhino is sometimes funny because if the solid is not completely contained or, or connected, it'll say no, it won't calculate the volume. Uh, but it did 108.882, which is exactly what we're getting back here, 108.882. So I hope I'm making this clear. I know that last bit of all that algebra, I kind of rushed through that, but my video is already getting pretty lengthy. Uh, and that's probably something that you just need to try on your own and spend some time with. Uh, thanks for watching my video.